from Eyewitness News, this is 13 Investigates. Plenty of hearing it with you all the time, but the question tonight is, is it safe? Tonight, 13 Investigates, your cell phone. It's constantly sending out radio waves, and for years there has been debate on whether that radiation can cause cancer. Some call it an urban legend. Others believe it is rock-solid truth. And now, a new study suggests there might actually be a hidden danger. Our senior investigative reporter, Bob Siegel, explains what you need to know and the easy steps you can take right now to help reduce possible risk. You get that phone call in the middle of the night, and it's just a call that no parent ever wants to get. Craig and Virginia Farver say their son Richard was perfectly healthy one moment, and the next... There's the tumor. He was fighting for his life. Brain cancer is what he was diagnosed with. A glioblastoma. We said, well, what does that mean? And he said, it's the most aggressive brain cancer that there is. The tumor was removed, but Richard died seven months later, just a week after his 29th birthday. It's horrible. We'll never be over it. No. It's a feeling Kristen Prishman can relate to. We found out on uh, Easter that uh, it was cancer. Her husband, Paul, was also diagnosed with glioblastoma. He never got to see his young daughters grow up. He didn't know my name. He didn't know uh, who the girls were. It was scary. Paul and Richard had the same type of cancer, and their families believe the deadly brain tumors were both caused by the same thing. Cell phone radiation. The cell phone. Can a cell phone really do that? Yes. Yeah, I believe 100% it, it can. Yeah. The science is actually unclear. Today's smartphones have several antennas located inside. When you talk, text, or stream music or videos, your phone sends out non-ionizing radiation, similar to a low-powered microwave. Theoretically, that type of radiation does not cause cancer, and there are a bunch of cell phone studies that say just that. But other studies suggest there could be a connection between cell phones and cancer. One of the largest and most recent studies was just completed here at this research institute in Chicago. In your lab, you found cell phone radiation caused cancer. That's correct. That's not overstating things. No, that's, that's, that's correct. This was, I think, a surprising finding. Dr. David McCormick is director of the institute, where thousands of mice and rats were placed in these special chambers and then exposed to RF or radio frequency radiation for two years. What we found is that in rats, there was an increased incidence of pre-malignant and malignant brain lesions. Based on the animal studies, there is a possible risk. Cell phone RF is potentially carcinogenic in humans. But the cell phone industry is skeptical of the government's new $30 million study. It says if cell phones really do cause cancer, we'd likely be seeing a huge increase in brain cancer cases, something that really has not happened. All of this is swelling because of the tumor. Dr. Mahua Day is a brain surgeon at the IU Health Neuroscience Center. She has seen a small increase in brain cancer cases. But when it comes to cell phones, she's not yet ready to make a connection. There's definitely enough um, correlative studies out there to bring your suspicion up that there may be something going on, but there's no conclusive hard data one way or the other that it's completely safe or it's carcinogenic. But some scientists point out it could be years before we can even figure that out because most people have only been using cell phones for 10, 15, maybe 20 years at the most. If there is a real hazard out there, but it could be another 15 years before we see it, Think about the billions of people who are being exposed to cell phone RF on a regular basis. We can't undo that exposure. Your exposure is constantly fluctuating. 13 Investigates purchased an RF meter to measure the radiation we cannot see. In normal mode, my iPhone registered 286 millivolts per meter, a very low amount of electromagnetic energy. But watch what happens when I turn on the Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and make a phone call. Now the RF radiation jumps to a high reading of nearly 6 volts per meter. Compared to 286 millivolts, that's 20 times more radiation, simply by changing how I use my phone. And distance makes a big difference, too. You might not realize it, but most cell phone manufacturers warn you not to hold your cell phone too close. Those warnings are in tiny print inside your owner's manual or 
deep inside your phone in the legal section that you've probably never looked at. This cell phone manual advises carrying the phone at least one inch away from your body. To me, that is an admission that they know these things are dangerous. The Farvers say their son had no idea he might be at risk as he talked on his cell phone for two or three hours a day. Paul Prishman talked on his cell phone three to 4,000 minutes every month. 3,000 minutes a month, that's, that's a lot. They want more awareness and more testing. In the meantime, hello. Kristen keeps her cell phone at a distance, Hi, I'm calling. Let's see only talking on speakerphone. And Virginia, she doesn't use a cell phone at all. I just want to tell people you don't want to go through this. It's hard. What you don't see can't hurt you. But people don't think about it. And that's the scary part. They don't even think about it. Right now, there is no scientific evidence definitively proving cell phone radiation causes cancer. A nationwide trade group that lobbies for the cell phone industry is aware of the new study, but it tells Eyewitness News the already existing body of peer-reviewed and published studies shows that there are no established health effects from radio frequency signals used in cell phones. The organization also points out the federal government already established exposure limits for cell phone radiation. But the limits were set 20 years ago. And take a look at this video. It shows the testing models are based on the amount of acceptable radiation absorbed by a 200 pound man. Kids bodies absorb RF radiation differently, prompting the American Academy of Pediatrics to call for stricter radiation guidelines for cell phones. If you want to reduce your exposure to this type of radiation, here's what you can do right now. Use the speakerphone function on your cell phone or use a headset instead of holding the phone right up to your ear. Better yet, text instead of talking. And keep your cell phone conversations as short as possible. Also, don't keep your cell phone in a pocket or let your kids sleep with their phone or iPad on their pillow. Even if you're not talking on your phone, it's still transmitting radiation if it's on and connected to a network. We have all these tips at WTHR.com, and we also have a tool to help you find the radiation test results for your specific cell phone. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, City Attorney, City Manager, ladies and gentlemen. Cell phones cause cancer. That's what numerous doctors and scientists from all around the world have been warning us about for years. On May 31st, 2011, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, part of the World Health Organization, put out a report that says your chance of becoming a cancer victim doubles once you hit the 10-year mark of using cell phones for a minimum of 30 minutes per day. And yes, there are industry-funded studies that tell us not to worry about cell phones or that it'll take another 20 or 30 years of research before we know whether cell phones cause cancer. In essence, they're telling us to treat cell phones like cigarettes 30 years ago. I, for one, happen to know that cell phones do cause cancer because everything we're being warned about by the World Health Organization's report and prestigious university professors like Dr. Deborah Davis fits me. I'm an attorney. From 2001 to 2011, I used to use cell phones a lot more than just 30 minutes a day. I always held it in my left hand, up against my left ear, and I carried them around in my suit jackets inner pockets. Lo and behold, if you were standing close to me, you'd see that there's a scar on my left hand, the result of nerve tumor removal surgery. If you can see the scar on the left side of my head, that's the result of brain cancer surgery on August 23rd, 2011. That's glioblastoma multiform level four. On top of that, I have an MRI that shows a tumor at my aortic bifurcation, right where my cell phone sat in my suit jackets. So that's one, two, three results of having a cell phone against my body. 
If you don't agree, just read through the booklet that was in the box when you bought your cell phone. If you have the time to dig through those 200 or 300 pages, somewhere in there you'll see that your cell phone emits a type of non-ionized radiation into your body. Radiation that they prefer to talk about as radio frequency and specific absorption rate. Somewhere near the term SAR, you'll see them asking you to always keep your cell phone away from your body because of the radiation. And by body, they mean your entire body. So if you're one of the people we saw on the news standing in line to get your hands on an iPhone 5, please be advised that somewhere in that manual, they're telling you to always keep it at least 10 millimeters away from your body. That's about an inch. Did you know that you're supposed to keep that thing an inch away from your body? Do your children know that? I'm pretty sure that's not what they see on TV or anything that we see in cell phone commercials. If you pay attention to what doctors and scientists are telling us about cell phones, look up what it says in your cell phone manual and put all of that together with the scars you see on a growing number of cancer victims like me. It should become crystal clear that cell phones do cause cancer and that the American people are not being properly warned about cell phones. Now, ever since my surgery, I've been doing all that I can to help spread the word about cell phone induced cancer. If you spend time on Facebook, just look up Pembroke Pines, Jimmy Gonzalez. Go through an album that I've titled Jimmy versus cell phone induced cancer and you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm here today because I believe my city commission can do something to warn adults and their children about keeping cell phones away from their bodies. I think Pembroke Pines should follow the example set forth by San Francisco and several city commissions in California, Connecticut, Hawaii, Maine, New York, not to mention the nations of India, Canada, France, Russia, etc. on this issue. I respectfully ask that you read through San Francisco's Right to Know Ordinance, and I brought a copy, the information posters that they came up with, and show your voters that you too are willing to do whatever it takes to warn everybody about keeping cell phones away from their bodies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you much, very much, Mr. Gonzalez. You'll get that to us. Okay, City Clerk. Mr. Mr. Schwartz. Uh, yes, uh, Jimmy, thank you for having the courage to come forward to share your story. Um, Commissioner Castillo, Jimmy lives in your district. I met uh, Jimmy and his family uh, uh, a few years ago, and um, several months back I learned about uh, the infliction and the struggles he was going through. What he didn't tell you is the man should not be standing here today based on the type of cancer he had. A life expectancy of 9 to 12 months and you're in, in month 13 or 14, correct, Jimmy? Yes. And you got some really good news from the doctors recently, correct? Correct. I'm doing well as compared to many other patients who unfortunately continue to put cell phones against their heads. Yeah. And uh, again, I want to thank you for, uh, for bringing the awareness uh, not only to this community, uh, but uh, your, your continuous effort of uh, ensuring that uh, cell phone use and reading the manual is most important. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Casile. Jimmy, I'd like, I'd like for you and I to get together and talk. I'd like for you and I to get together and to talk a little bit more about this. And uh, if you will leave your name, your address, and your phone number with the clerk, I want us to get together. I want to learn more about this. Uh, this is the first that uh, first time that someone has come here to talk about this issue, and I think that if if we're going to proceed as a city, the first thing we need to do is we need to catch up with 
your fact base. And I think that this is a very, very important issue. And I want, and I want to tell you, when I devote myself to something, <laughs> it's 100%. So if you will leave your name, your address, and your phone number with the clerk, you will get a call from me, me next week so that we can get together and we can start talking about this. We can start gathering information and uh, um, see what the best approach for this is. Thank you, Commissioner. How about the hearing earpiece? Better? The hearing earpiece is the, the Bluetooth or whatever they want to call it. How is that thing getting a message from your cell phone? Some, some thing in the ear. <laughs> Essentially, uh, a lot of the people that I see wearing it wear it like an earring. So if they say that, well, it has less radiation or radio frequency, but you're wearing it in your ear all day, which one is worse? Yeah. Okay. Well, Commissioner Castillo, we want to look at this uh, seriously. We will certainly be in touch with you, and thank you for coming forward. Thank you, Mr. Appreciate Mayor. Appreciate it.